These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. Uh, there's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. In these videos, uh, I'm going to be referring to some handouts and other documents that I've prepared uh, that summarize some of the material that we'll be talking about uh, in the videos. Um, and uh, I'm going to probably uh, be referring to those handouts quite a bit. Uh, you'll be able to follow along with the videos much better if you actually print those documents out and have them in front of you while you're watching the videos. You can obtain the handouts and other documents, again, at my website. Uh, again, here is the address of my website, and the easiest way to get there is just to click the link in the info box. Okay, so I was going to record again today for YouTube. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, perhaps um, I think this is a real good chart to go over. This chart of uh, these reactions does seem to be important reactions for the class. So. Okay, so let's write the product from this reaction. Like radical bromination? Yeah. How do we know this is going to be a radical mechanism? Because there's ER2 and there's heat and... Um, right. Actually, light. this stands for ultraviolet light. But yeah, either heat or light as an energy source is a... Um, especially when you get light. When you, oh. they show you light, that's a very good sign that it's going to be a radical mechanism. I have a question for you. On my last... On the last midterm, I put like heat instead of light for some problem, and they took off points. Yeah, for that. no. So how do you know when it's supposed to be heat, and how do you know when it's supposed to be light? Um, well, the the time that you can use either heat or light is radical halogenation. Either heat or light should work uh, for that. Is that what they took off the points? No. I'd have to look at the problem. Um, besides radical halogenation, you really shouldn't be using light. The only time that you should be using light is for radical halogenation. Any other reaction if you need energy, or basically the only time you should be using light is for radical mechanisms. Any well, other reaction where you need energy, I you put, should be using heat. I put heat for, it was on the page of the like fischer tropsch process, one of those kinds of reactions, mm -hmm. and I put heat instead of light, and that's why they took off. The which process? fischer tropsch fischer tropsch oh, I don't know if you've even heard of that, so. Oh. Okay, so um, that's just apparently some special reaction that has certain conditions that you need for that. Okay. So if you've gone over some specific reactions, uh, you might just have to memorize what the right uh, energy source is uh, for each of those. Uh, but in general, for kind of the standard OCHEM reactions, for a radical mechanism, you can use light or heat. And for pretty much everything else, you should be using heat. Did you say, what, what did you use that got marked off? You I used, used uh, heat. You used heat. All right, actually, usually it's, it's safe to use heat, so um, I haven't heard of that reaction, I guess. It has different conditions. Okay. All right, well, it shouldn't be too hard to write the product here. Um, maybe we won't go through the whole mechanism for this, because we know radical halogenations have a pretty complicated mechanism. And I don't think you're going to be tested on this mechanism on the next midterm. So let's just see if we can get the product here. Doesn't it have talked about to tertiary, but there's no tertiary, so we just move on to second? Right. The pencil would be best if you have it. Now this is a radical mechanism, so it would leave a dot behind, not a positive charge. All right, but again, maybe we won't go through the whole mechanism for this today, just to save time, because we got a lot to cover. Okay, 
Um, so just quickly, there were some problems with a lot of the mechanisms here. So our mechanisms good for our and dissociate. Uh, then remember, there should be an arrow showing these electrons splitting up in this bond that leaves this dot uh, over here. Um, and then and then this should be taking uh, hitching up with uh, a Br2, not a Br dot, otherwise it would be termination. But actually, but let's not try to iron out all the details there. We should, um, it's good to know the mechanisms, but I think for this next midterm, you should be able to go straight to the product. So the na what's the name of this mechanism again? Bromination. Um, yeah, bromination. So let's just say overall, what happens in a bromination? What happens in a bromination overall? Let, let's not even worry about the mechanism. What, what's the big change between the starting materials add, and the products? Add a halogen to the original organic chemistry. That's right. But we can't add something without taking something off, because everybody already has a full octet. So what is leaving? Hydrogen. A hydrogen. That's right. So this is really a substitution reaction. This is not SN2 or SN1, but it's a radical substitution. What are we substituting? We're substituting a halogen for a hydrogen. OK, now we have some regiochemistry here, because there's more than one region that can um, react. Um, well, um, is this going to take place at the more or less substituted carbon? More. At the more substituted carbon. We should just know that radical halogenation occurs at the most substituted carbon. Um, bromine is very selective, so we can expect that this is going to go at our secondary carbon. It doesn't matter which secondary we use, because this is a symmetric molecule. So we can use either se uh, uh, secondary. So I'm just going to put this bromine here. And remember, it's really replacing a, one of the hidden hydrogens. OK, um, so uh, uh, like I said, actually, it looked like a, a lot of you tried to go through the mechanism, and uh, there, were, uh, there were some problems with that. So I think I gave you guys the handout on radical halogenation, right? So if you want to review the mechanism on radical halogenation, you should take a look at that. You all have that handout? No. Yeah, I don't know if we... All right, I'll give you the handouts, and you, you can review that on your own because I don't want to spend yeah. time on the mechanism today. All right, who needs the handout? Everybody, or only some people? This is the radical halogenation handout. Okay. Um, all right. Now, uh, it looked like from looking over all your shoulders, there's one big thing that we all forgot, which is at, at this point in the course, you always have to ask, is this carbon that's reacting forming a stereocenter? We always have to ask if the carbon is reacting is forming a stereocenter. Yes. Is this a stereocenter? Yes. And that means we've got to think about the stereochemistry. Um, so what's going to be the stereochemistry here? Are we going to get uh, two stereoisomers or one stereoisomer? Two. 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 Why? Well, we didn't go through the whole mechanism here, but remember we're going through a radical intermediate. A radical intermediate, and the geometry of that is trigonal planar. So it can attack from the top. Of the and so it can attack from two sides. I think we've seen that when you attack something trigonal planar, you get a maximum of two products, stereoisomeric products. So we're going to get two. So we should all have drawn one picture that looks like this, and one picture that looks like this. All right, and these would be uh, all the products from this reaction. Okay, so it's good to you know the You don't need to draw the HBr? The HBr. Oh, yeah, um, at this point in the course, you're not going to care about any inorganic products uh, that we're getting. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's the ones that we would focus on here. Okay, good. Okay, so you want to make sure you're comfortable with that. So um, what were we shaky on here? Well, it looks like most of you are shaky on the mechanism, but that shouldn't be your top priority because that's not going to be a big deal on the exam. What you should be looking out for is forming stereocenters. If you're forming a stereocenter, you've got to do the stereochemistry for that. Okay, um, now... Now, uh, so the problem I just gave you is what's called predict the products. What was on the board a second ago was predict the products, because I gave you the starting materials and asked you to predict the product. Now, here, there's a different problem. This is a different problem. This is what we could call a synthesis problem. So we can start learning how to do synthesis now. In synthesis, you're given both the starting materials and the products, and you have to come up with reagents that will take you from the starting materials to the products. So what would be the answer to this synthesis question? 
BR2 BR2 of light. Yeah, that one was pretty easy, right? Because we just did the predict the products. But that kind of shows that synthesis is not some, I don't know, bizarre, weird type of problem. It's a kind of variation on predict the products. And you can see why it's futile to try synthesis until, you have, until you're a master of predict the products. If you're really good at predicting the products, you should be able to come up with the right synthesis. 